Hello Sagittarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Sagittarius October 2022 Astrology Horoscope. This is for you if Sagittarius is your sun sign like me or if you have any other placement in Sag, rising, moon, Venus, Mercury, whatever you watch for, what we're going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you are a late degree Sag, also like me, so we'll say like December 15th through the rest of the sign or like 23 or so degrees through the rest of the sign, I additionally suggest you listen to my Capricorn horoscope because us late degree friends will also have pieces from that cap report. The tagline of this month, and you're going to see why, is what they're not telling you. So we're going to go into the different layers of why this is coming up in the chart as a theme. These are some things that are very important about this month. You can see it's jam-packed, power-filled month. A lot to talk about here, so I'm just going to touch on some of this stuff and most of the stuff we're going to go back deeper into into the chart. First thing to know is we've got more salty compared to sweet aspects this month. I don't love to report that, but at the same time, it's also not the end of the world. It's nothing to have, you know, experience foreboding about. It just means that you'll be driving and there'll be a roadblock, a speed bump driving and a road bump. So as you're trying to move along, there are going to be a lot of times you've got to slow your roll and gracefully go over, which is okay, because if you're trying to rush through things, Mars being in retrograde, and of course, still having some Mercury influence until the uh, half of the month is over, of Mercury retrograde, is this time where we're not supposed to be rushing. It's the time to be the spider, to basically hang out in your web that you've already created and let all the food come to you instead of going out to try to force something to happen. So if you're taking this leisurely way up and down, the speed bumps can actually be kind of fun. And if you know that this is happening, it will leave you better prepared. And also do know that even though the salty sweet ratio is a little off this month, we still have plenty of sweet aspects. We've got gosh, a good bunch of trines, and some of them are with the personal planets, so they're not as, as prominent as ones that connect with the outer planets, but we still have a lot of nice sweet boosts here to get some kisses along the way. So uh, speaking of Mercury retrograde, it's direct October 2nd, and that post-transit shadow period that lingers will be clear around o October 17th. And so the second half of the month will be a little easier to schedule things. It will be a little bit easier to have clarity about certain topics. Although we are in this very long web of retrograde that goes into spring or fall for you all down under of 2023, at least we will have one of these retrograde energies clear in the second part of October. So if there's something you have to do, you might have a little bit more energy there as far as clarity or trying to schedule. But if you're looking for oomph and ambition and, you know, other people to show up as the month of October goes on, the likelihood is going to be that we are not going to have people do what they say they're going to do because everybody's getting lazy and that's including you. And this can actually be a wonderful thing because Mars rules ambition and oomph and how we use our energy and Sagis tend to be very energetic and pushing off in all these different directions. So with our ruler, Jupiter being in retrograde and the ruler of our energy levels, Mars being in retrograde, this is just a time to just chill and relaxed, you know, just lay, sit on the beach, let the tides bring things into you. Don't try to make things happen because if you do, you'll get frustrated. That will not be good. So this is, you know, just a general understanding of the month is you're just going to go with the flow and drop the agendas as much as possible and decrease your to-do list into only the basic things and the things that show up right in front of you to be dealt with and that seem to be going well when you're trying to address them. We do have the heat of eclipse season in October and November, so we're going to talk more about that, but do know that big change is afoot. These are at some challenged angles for Saggies, so that means it might be a little bit more difficult for us to let go of the things that are, it's time to move on. And it may be a little bit bittersweet when we say hello to some new stuff, but we are reshuffling around energy and we'll talk about that more. 
We've got a big boom also this month with this last Saturn Uranus square. 2021 was covered in this energy and we had a close connection early in 2022. It kind of went a little into the backdrop and now here October 1st through 12th, we've got this big clash. I will talk about some of the main principles of this and I do have another resource that I've created to help you understand it more. All right, so let's look at what we have going on here and why I'm saying we've got this topic of what they're not telling you. The first thing to know is that this triple retrograde energy of Mercury for half the month, Mars getting deeper as the month goes on from October 30th through January 18th, having its official retrograde with that post shadow transit lasting all the way into March. And then Jupiter retrograde still until November 23rd. This is a time where there, the, you know, there's like a fog over things and things are a little bit murky. Things are where you really can't see even with your glasses on where it's really hard to tell what the heck is going on. So we've got Mercury retrograde energy making things where people are leaving important things out. Mars retrograde in your partnership space is causing all kinds of questions about how you are in relationships, the people you're in relationships with, and some things they may or may not be telling you. So now this doesn't have to only be a bad thing, okay? But we will focus on the, on the less positive aspect first and then we'll swing around to the more positive. The energy of not being told something usually is because somebody is afraid, right? So somebody could have something in their history that they didn't tell you and that comes out, it's a skeleton in the closet. You know, the Scorpio energy with the eclipse, we'll get more into that, but there, this energy is prominent. It could have something to do with a project or friendships or, you know, anything having to do with friendships, groups, your tribe. And although there are some really sweet opportunities here because of this beautiful angle, there's still this overlying kind of the thing that they're not saying or the thing that they're holding back or the thing they think will be a deal breaker and they won't mention it. So this could be out of malice, like actually not telling you and knowing that they're not telling you, or this could be that they just don't know and the information is not forthcoming. So the big thing now is to trust your intuition. And if you think that there's something more to something someone's telling you or not telling you, then you are probably right. So this is a time to get to the bottom of the things that people aren't telling you, but this is also having to do with things in your relationship. There are things that you do not know about your partner and people that you are with as far as friendships or other close connections simply because you didn't ask. All right, so this beautiful period of time that's opened up here, October, November, this is a time for you to get to know the people in your life better because there are things that you don't know about them that they're not offering, but if you ask them, they would tell you. And with the energies in Libra and the energies moving into Scorpio and then the eclipse in Scorpio, this is the time of year where, and especially because we've got our ruler retro, we've got Mars retro, you know, all these things we talked about, it's just culminating in such a way that the partnerships are the central focus. The people in our lives having those important conversations, having those conversations that we usually avoid, having, you know, anything having to do with the things that we might need to tell people about us, like what we're not telling other people. And there might be some really positive things too. Like maybe someone really loves you and they're not saying, I love you. Maybe someone thinks a great deal about you, but you know, they're not mentioning anything because you're not engaged in conversation with them or you're distracted with your big ideas or big visions. You know, there could be a lot of positive things that that it's really time to start hearing this and to try to not take things personally and know that information is going to come out from the Scorpio energy. And it's really time to put some power and energy into your partnership space and you can really improve your relationships. And if there are those things that you sweep under the rug, the retrogrades at the time where the rug gets pulled up and all the stuff that was under the rug comes flying out and that's actually appropriate. Well, this is the time for you to do that and the space is being cleared. So a lot of things that Sages might be trying to do, making plans, going around doing things, seeing things, having all these things, you're not supposed to be doing that. Nope, we're not doing that. But instead, you're showing up for the people around you and you're connecting with the people around you, including yourself, to go deeper into your inner world. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about our ruler being retrograde until November 23rd. This is important because we tend to be less buoyant and less energetic and less enthusiastic and less clear about our big dreams and less motivated when Jupiter is in retrograde. Okay, the fact that Mars is also in retrograde, making us and other people lazy, is, is just a side fact. But Jupiter had been moving, blazing forward in your house of creativity. And now it's going backwards. So you might find that things that you were sure that you wanted to focus on in your as your creative babies or things like that, you might be going back over things instead of trying to launch to bring them out. Remember, this is a time to be the spider and to eat the food that comes to you, not go out to get food. It's the time to be on the shore and just wait and see what the tides bring in for you and then deal with those things instead of trying to force your, your project or your anything ahead. That being said, you might find that you have a lot of creativity and there could be some experimentation going on there, but for the most part, you're wrapping up old projects and you're just letting it be. If you don't feel motivated or you don't feel inspired or you don't feel clear on what to focus on, just let necessity or your whim at that moment really where you where you light up and basically are not getting frustrated from things being in your way let that dictate now if you have children or you're wanting to have children this topic is coming back up it's possible that your kids need some things that coupled with this energy in scorpio and this shuffling around of taurus and scorpio energy you might be having to table some of your dreams okay so these things that you like think about that you want to do that's you thinking about all your big dreams being a sag some of those things, we're not going to cross them out. We're just going to kind of put them on a little shelf and deal with what has to be dealt with, either in your romantic sector, because the fifth house is ruling that, um, or for your children, or in other close personal relationships, or your spiritual studies. Scorpio can also rule that. So we've got, you know, just a shuffling around of energy from the eclipses where your own things might be taking a back seat to the things that other people need around you and you feeling really good about that like feeling like you're showing up in bigger ways for the people around you and learning a lot about yourself in the meantime and also getting a break from getting just kind of tired from being all over the place remember sad energy is going an upward spiral so we're kind of like all over the place right and at this time we're really just getting focused on what's right in front of us. So that's very exciting. All right. So although we've got some points of conflict this month, we do got have a lot of beautiful aspects too. And even though Jupiter is in retrograde, it is still trining our placements. Okay. So Jupiter going back, making a trine with Sag placements. Anyone that has placements eight degrees or less, so zero to eight degrees, you're getting mega kisses from Jupiter. Okay, so that's basically November born Sagittarius, Scorpitarius friends, or if you have a Sag placement anywhere between zero and eight degrees, and you can run a free birth chart to find that out. I have different resources. You can go to AnnieBastrology.com, join my exclusive content portal to learn more about your natal chart and get your free birth chart or you can do an online search for you know, a free birth chart or whoever, but you might have, like me, a ton of Sag placements. So the odds are that you might have something there in the zero to eight degrees and you're getting extra kisses from the benevolent Jupiter trying to expand your world. But don't worry, all Sages are going to get kisses between now and spring of 2023 or fall 2023 for you all down under. So that's one thing that is going on. And even though it's in retrograde, the kisses are still there. And even if you're not in the early degree placement, the energy is still there. The second thing we have going on is we've got a full moon. Actually, my lines are a little bit whacked because in the Placidus chart, the further you get from the equator, the more you have to kind of fix these lines here. So just redrawing that. Okay. so. The fifth house this month for us is also going to hold the 16 degrees of Aries full moon. Okay, so that's on our list there. October 9th and the days around October 9th. So we'll say like October 6th or October 12th, especially 
fullness, completion, fruition, drama, coming to stuff in our personal lives, our recognition, our physical bodies, our love, our kids, our creative projects, our hobbies, in some cases addictions, taking fun things to the nth degree. But again, this is a nice angle, so hopefully it'll be sweet here. But we don't know what else, I don't know what else is in your chart, so it could be making different aspects to other placements. But the days around here, you're going to have a lot of noteworthy emotion, for better or worse. Hopefully it's better because of the nice angle. And I would leave a little space so you can be extra present for what goes on there. But in any case, hopefully you'll get some kisses. And those of you who are between 11 and 21 degrees, the closer to 16 degrees, the more you get the kiss. So that's like the first couple of weeks of December, essentially. And those of you closer to the end of the first week, like 6th, 7th, 8th, the more the kiss you get from that full moon. And of course, a kiss can be a blessing, a sweet outcome, extra personal attention at this full moon time. All right, so let's just get down into these eclipses. I've been alluding to some of them as they've related to other placements here. But let's talk about October 25th, 2 degrees of Scorpio solar eclipse, November 8th, 16 degrees of Taurus lunar eclipse. We will be feeling the energies of that lunar eclipse in October, even though it's in November, and you might have started to see information come in from these eclipses, even in September. The eclipse season is September through December, with the heat of them in October and November. Eclipses tend to move things around. So like I mentioned before, we have a reshuffling of our stuff versus our own or other people's stuff or shared resources. We have a reshuffling of our inner world and our outer world, of our emotions and the practical things that we have to do all the time, of logic and intuition. There's a lot of shuffling around. There are places we might need to be a little bit more logical and practical. And there are places we need to be a little bit more intuitive and trusting and connected and looking out for the synchronicities. And so at this time in October, November, especially, you're going to see a lot of those stories and synchronicity, which is the language of spirit, might show up very strongly. Like, let's say you're thinking, should I move? And then you keep seeing like a truck right in front of you at that moment. It's time to move. Or, you know, you the words of a song that get really loud to you at some point where you feel like it's spirit talking right to you or whatever, whatever the story is. Things that seem like coincidences might be happening in more frequency because this energy is accentuating the twelfth house for Sages, which is you know the land of the land of synchronicity. So money, uh, sustainability, you know your relationship with your f material things versus your emotional world. All of this is getting shuffled around, and you might find if you've been focusing on material things. Not that Sages have a tendency to do that, but in your daily experience, if your things have been getting a lot of attention and needing a lot of attention, it's very likely that the people are going to need more attention and taking a little bit more focus away from the things and onto the people are going to be what's called for at this time. So to learn more about these eclipses, I'm kind of giving you the lowdown here, but I've got a lot of resources. All of these are free things to help you understand all the stuff going on. So these additional resources, you can look for Mars Retrograde and Mercury Retrograde on my YouTube channel and blog. Just search for Annie Botticelli and those retrogrades to find those resources. I suggest that everyone listens to my Eclipses in Scorpio video and my Eclipses in Taurus video. You can search for those with my name to try to find them, or you can go directly to my YouTube channel at AnnieHelpsYouTV.com and go to the Eclipse playlist. Those recordings are going to show you all of the ways that I've seen these eclipses manifest in those signs. Okay, so it really give you a full scope of the potentials of this time and what you can do with them. Now I'm additionally recommending for my Saggy friends to watch the eclipses in Pisces or the 12th house video because that's where from the whole house perspective this eclipse is going to take place for us. But from the Placidus perspective, because it's at two degrees, every Sag has a chance to also experience this in the Placidus chart in the 11th house. So look for the eclipses in Aquarius energy. So let's talk a little bit more about what those eclipses might bring, but you can go deeper into those videos. All right, so the eclipses in Pisces or the 12th house can bring spiritual breakthroughs, a new relationship with your dream life as far as 
lucid dreaming or connecting with people who've crossed over, understanding about your genetics or your ancestry, activation of a spiritual part of you, or really starting to understand how to turn genes off and turn them on. This is going to be the medicine of the future. And anyone that tells you it differently is lying or not doesn't know because understanding our genetics and how, our, how we particularly react to things is definitely the medicine of the future. And along those lines, we've got genes that we can turn on and we can turn off. And so the study of epigenetics really takes this into consideration. So you might have a breakthrough along the lines of epigenetics. Maybe this is calling out strongly to you from me mentioning it and you will look it up. Look for the work of Dr. Bruce Lipton, one of my favorite people, to really understand this energy of not only turning on our potentials in genetics for health and wellness, but also our karma that we're carrying with us through our ancestry. So this is a very powerful time when this eclipse might accentuate this for us. And also a lot having to do with our health, our physicality, um, you know, and our spiritual well-being. In the Placidus chart, because of the early degree, we might also feel this in the 11th house, which is the house of Aquarius. And this can bring in changes to our friendships, our groups, um, feeling like we have a tribe we belong to that speaks our language, working in a group with someone, leading a community or, or people leading a community, internet-based projects, friendships, key friendships, or in general acquaintances or networking may be strongly highlighted at this time. Because of the tilt to retrograde, it might happen that a friend from the past or an acquaintance from the past might, you know, retrograde their way back into your life with all this retrograde energy. So if you feel called to connect with someone, you find a business card, it falls out of a book and you're like, whoa, I should call this person. Probably you should. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about is this Saturn Uranus square. The last one will feel it the most strongly around October 1st through 12th, but it will linger into and through part of November and you might start feeling it heat up again in September. And we've never been far enough away from it that it's not been present. I'm going to give you a couple of points about it, but definitely search for Annie Botticelli Saturn Square Uranus and see the video um, or syndicated podcast because this is a big doozy. It ruled 2021, you know, and it's very strong here. This is the energy of Saturn, the stodgy patriarchy, the systems, the old, the stable, the things that worked and the things that didn't and the planet Uranus, shock and awe revolutionary, radical, progressive, in the square, very challenged aspect. And so this basically, these planets are acting upon each other. Uranus is acting upon the old stodgy systems and breaking them down. We have seen this, it will continue, and there will be notable volatility at this time from this. But equally as important is Saturn is acting on Uranus, which means that those new ideas, those progressive ideas, those great futuristic technological advances, are there certain things about them that aren't sustainable? Are there things we need to know more about before we, you know, enforce them? So Saturn is, you know, has the, the Saturnian glasses on who, where we're looking at things to the eyes of sustainability, of logic, of practicality, of, you know, of being protective and unsure and, and hesitance. So there's some rightful hesitance for some new ideas and there's some rightful breaking up of the old way. And this is, um, these are acting upon each other. So this is happening globally. We're seeing it. We will see it, but it's also happening in our lives. You know, what archaic systems do we have? What archaic belief systems do we have that are no longer serving? What is new and different that we can try and experiment with, especially in a low stakes way? And what, do we need to use the stability and tried and true energy that is positive about Saturn to use as a viewpoint for the new things that come in? The grass is not always greener on the other side with a new idea. And there are certain aspects of systems that have to be kept in place in order for total chaos to not come in from the unpredictable erratic energy of Uranus. So we're looking to find the balance here globally in the communities and in our lives. And this is a pressure point where we have a chance to evaluate these things and make some uh, positive changes. The last thing that I want to talk about 
I mentioned a lot of stuff about Mars retro, but I just want to talk about the fact that it is opposing our Sagittarius placements. Okay, this is a very important aspect, the opposition, 180 degree angle is very powerful in astrology. So that means that things in our relationship and things in our what we're trying to do for ourselves can be at odds with each other, or we're finally getting on the same team as somebody who seemed to be opposing us. And so we have opportunities to work in cooperation in greater ways. And I talked about this at the beginning about all of this relationship stuff and our relationships needing our focus at this time. So you might finally get on the same page with somebody and really make headway on a project or go back to things that worked or try some different things. This is a very heavy experimental time where you can try some low stakes things that could turn out to have major positive outcomes. But do know that your world and the things you need and your relationship space are going to need each other. They're either going to be competing and at odds or you're just going to be busy on both fronts. And the more ways you can find to, you know, do things that serve both, the better that's going to be because Mars working in opposition to our placements can lead us to overextended, you know, combustion where we are exhausting, exhausting ourselves. So you have, might have to just be a little more careful about taking your supplements that your practitioners have guided you or your own research or whoever, whatever you're doing there to help support your um, systems, you know, to help support your immune system because these oppositions can definitely pull on your respiratory tract, um, that, especially that Gemini influence. If you resonate with how I teach and you want to learn astrology, I have oh so many different ways that you can do that. I've got a ton of free things, which you can see my blogs at AnnieHelpsYou.com. You can see my blogs at CozyBySweetStarlight.com. You can watch my YouTube horoscopes and other astrology videos at AnnieHelpsYouTV.com, also syndicated on my Astro Kisses podcast. The AnnieHelpsYouTV.com is my YouTube channel. If you would like to have some wellness and creating financial abundance free courses, go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E, life.com. There I also have two of my most comprehensive astrology courses, including Astrology Basics and Beyond, and my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course. If you want to do astrology as all or part of your profession, I can teach you how. And even if you don't want to do it professionally, this course, which has at least 100 modules in it, it's super comprehensive and growing, you can learn how to help yourself and your family and your friends. And if you want to do it a little bit more low key for my little very low subscription exclusive content portal access, you can have even more learning how to do it yourself, read your natal chart, access to a natal chart, and plus extra and sometimes early content at AnnieBAstrology.com. Also check out my books. Books are not very expensive. They're um, available through Kindle as well and one of them is available through Audible. You can check out Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days. It's a beautiful book. I've heard a lot of people carry it around in their purses. It's got affirmations and just other ways to stay connected to spirit. And planetology, how to align with the natural rhythms of the universe. This is a gorgeous, very long, comprehensive textbook that has simple sections that you can follow and go back to over and over again to help you align with the natural rhythms of the universe. You will find this book on the shelf at all the major booksellers in the Mind, Body, Spirit section. And you can find both of these online and through any other venue. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.